That thing sounds mean. It's all blocked out. There's nothing new there, and there is like a family of eight rifling that bin. Well, at least we got our groceries out of the way for the week there. Okay, guys, back to business. We've got another Fast and Furious unboxing tonight. I have stopped by stretches tonight and re-upped. Um, I dropped off the ones that we've already done and picked up two more. And I think the one that we're going to do tonight is one that he just got. Um, it's Greenlight Artisan. And it is the Fast and the Furious. And it's Tiago's Trans Am. I think we're gonna check that out tonight. I'm just in the mood to do another Artisan, I don't know. Uh, since the Kill Bill truck, I'm kind of in a good mood about the Artisans. So, I think we should go home and rip into that. Dude, Stretch loaned you his new Greenlight Artisan 1 of 18 scale 78 Trans AM, the one from Fast and Furious Retro, the same one he only got in the mail like seven minutes ago. Wow, that's cool of him. He's basically taken it from the mailman and handed it to you. He should headbutt the mailman. Why would you say that? You start out saying nice things and then end it with something he should headbutt the mailman. You're a weirdo, dude. Why? Retro, my bad big dog. I guess I'm still choked because my mailman left my 1 of 18 scale green light Bigfoot outside in the snow, the dildo. Destroyed the whole outer box, so I guess I'm still mad. It wasn't your mailman. He should headbutt my mailman. How do I, I was gonna get mad about that. How do I, you're, that's, you're being ridiculous. That's funny. You know what, guys? It's funny. I got Gordon cars, and when I went to ODA, I only took him his two-pack, and I left him his cars here because in the rush for me to get out the door, I couldn't find where I put the cars. Now, I put cars in stupid places all the time because, obviously, the other half of the room has a gargantuan collection, and if the stuff ends up in the other half of the room, it's going to get mixed up, and it's no fault of Glenn's or anybody else's. Things just get mixed up. So I'll put them in weird places to try to keep them separate. And last time, it's funny, because it's only his cars I have trouble finding, but last time I had trouble finding his cars. I ended up, I ended up finding them, but I had trouble... And now today I'm having trouble finding his cars. His silver, I think it's an Audi. And the white Supra. Um, don't worry, Gordon, they're here. And if they weren't, I would just replace them. I mean, it's they're not uh, terribly expensive or anything. But it's just annoying because it's by my hands. I know they're, I'm going to find them and it's going to be like, Neil, you're an idiot. Okay, so he just got this, literally, guys. Um, not today, but the other day. So the first unboxing video, I believe, which was the GMP Fast and Furious Roadrunner, he was sitting here watching me do that. He had to leave because this had arrived and he didn't want to just leave it sitting outside his door for obvious reasons. Um, so he just got this. So I'll read you the back of the box. Fast and Furious, official movie merchandise. 
Filled with cool cars, chart-topping music, and high-octane attitude, Fast and Furious, the explosively popular franchise built on speed, continued to fuel the car culture craze. So start your engines, get in gear, and experience the ride of your life. Fast and Furious Movie.net. Um, I believe you might still be able to get these at the retail level. I'm not positive. I, and if not, it's they haven't been gone for long. Because I know they're not terribly old. Uh, cake style box. Uh, I love them and hate them because cake style boxes, if you want to display the car, you got to take the car out of the box or else you're just displaying a box because there's no window on it. But these boxes protect the car like no other, like nothing like the window boxes. These are way better. The only problem is they're for function and not looks. Um, thank you again, Stretch, for lending us his brand new car and several cars to do this series with. Um, I'm also going to show you a car that Glenn got. It's a new Maisto. It's a blue charger, but it's a blue charger with a twist. They changed something on it. Before the video ends, I'm going to show you guys that. Um, he unboxed it just a while ago today. And the only reason I didn't put unbox that is because I we can't interrupt the series. Um, because it's a five part series, right? So these boxes come with, it says top on it, so you know which end it is, thank goodness. That's kind of cool. So nice car die cast puts a little thing showing that they checked the car over and everything's a-okay. It means uh, once they reseal it in the box and everything, it's not going to be missing the antenna, it's not going to be missing a mirror. Uh, and basically this guy, those initials, he's putting his word on the line. Ooh, this paint's gorgeous from what I'm seeing. It looks, mm -hmm. I like the way they did that hood. That's different the yeah. way they did that. Mm -hmm. um, the hood, guys, is really, di oh, it's got a CB antenna. No, it's a, the license plate came separate in a bag. That's all. I wonder if there's a reason for that. Maybe it, we'll check in a minute. So, I got to turn on the light, actually. So, this yeah, Firebird, you. pardon me, boy. Sorry about that, guys. I was playing with the light, depowered it somehow. Um, so, that Trans Am symbol is like I've never seen it on another car. That is very cool. It's um, like a mat on the inside of it. Of course, we're going to get a better look on it up at the look he set on the turntable. But that really stands out. Um, and I like how it says year one on the window too. But let's have a look at this. And this is interesting, guys. This is the license plate. I'm wondering why this, why they would have that separate like that. Maybe they just wanted to, because you know how some cars like Glenn's Exoto, actually I'll show you it in a minute, but wait, this makes sense. A license plate that's uh, separate like this looks way more realistic, guys. Glenn's Exoto Cobra has real little license plates like that, and it looks a lot more real, so that's probably why they did that. And I will show you that Cobra. A uh, good thing about these guys is they're made to be taken out of the box and displayed. No windows, nothing to damage, no blisters. Um, it comes on a tray. Uh, green lights doing it this way. Now, Artisan is made to, I call them shelf burners, okay? They're made to look good on the shelf. Look at those rims, Glenn. Mm -hmm. That's nice, eh? Yep. And it's got a plate on it. What's, oh, it's a front plate, okay. And it's, yeah, it's they didn't want it breaking off because it comes to a point. Yeah, that's probably and it. I think the license plate, uh, in reality, was on one on the driver's side, more more to the left of the point though i'm not sure i didn't watch this one i don't remember the car yeah um so yeah that's another thing guys whatever movie this was in i did not watch i got lost in them so i couldn't tell you about the accuracy of this car i'm just going to tell you about the quality and beauty yeah. um so stretch is was not a fan of having to get this because it's artisan and 
The reason why is because artisan certain things is okay to have the hood not open. Glenn has a Roscoe, uh, like a Dukes of Hazard patrol car, um, artisan. The hood doesn't open, but you don't need the hood to open on that car. The two doors open on it. It's come it, like I would. I'll eventually probably end up buying one of those because I love it. Um, I actually like that artisan version better than the Auto World ones just because it's the, the body style I remember and it, they did a great job on it. Um, but artisan, I love them or I hate them, but I'm starting to love them even more because they make them so that everything that you see on them is gorgeous, okay? Like they throw a lot at the paint like, they just put a lot into how it sits on display, if you know what I'm saying. Like, that Kill Bill truck was gorgeous. And that was a truck that I didn't know if I wanted to own it. I'd only seen pictures of it. So, again, guys, hood does not open, unfortunately. With these, there's not much you would see anyway. Because of the big air cleaners, stuff like that. You'd see the chrome valve covers, but that's about it. Um, so it's not like you're missing a lot. It's got the teardrop headlights. Um, reminiscent of the Bandit, but the Bandit was made to look like a 77. Um, it's got the teardrop headlights, but it's gorgeous. What I really like is the rim and tire combo. I think the car is going to sit really nice, do really good glamour shots. Of course, we're going to look at the interior in a minute. What's that say on the back there? That's a year one. Oh, no, it just says Trans Am. Okay, Trans Am. Okay, oh, you know what? They put a little... Oh, that's cool. He's got a number on the bottom of it. Um, so... Hard to say how many artisans were made. And again, if anybody ever watches my videos and knows production numbers on the Greenlight Artisan Family Truckster, the guy to my left here, they made at least two different versions. They made the one with Aunt Edna, the dirty version with Aunt Edna on the roof, and then they made the clean version. If you know facts about that, production numbers, whatever, spit them out at us. We'd love to know. Uh, so the number on the bottom of this is 1723. Now we don't know out of how many, but it's cool because not every single one has a production number on it. So we will look at the interior because the only thing that opens is the doors. The doors open beautifully though. Um, you could definitely tell it's not a maestro by the way these doors open. Um, and it's got a better quality feel than the Maisto. It's got a sunroof like the Maisto as well. Uh, but they don't have that flimsy. Uh, like the Maisto doesn't feel flimsy, but this car just feels a little bit more hardy. Um, the only thing is the steering wheel looks, I don't know if it's just me, but the wheel looks a little bit big on that. But it could be because it's got racing seats in it making it look different. So I'm not gonna complain about the wheel because the seats are probably making it look drastically different. Um, it looks like it's gonna sit amazing and it looks like it's gonna take amazing glamour shots. And that's what the artisans are about, guys. If you ask me, it's about how they take a photo, how they look when you're walking by and look at them, right? No chrome paint pen needed for inside the door. Even the little where that leather strap is, where the two metal things, they colored it in. Little details that the Maisto didn't do, but I'm not shitting on Maisto because for the bang for the buck, you cannot beat them, right? Doors open and close beautifully. Um, and the paint is flawless. Look at that, flawless. Um... Yeah, so in my opinion, guys, Greenlight Artisan, it's not about opening stuff. It's about how they sit and how they look and how they take a photo. I'm not going to put his front plate on because uh, I think you guys get the idea. I'm going to save that for him. 
The bag is actually, I don't believe it's sealed. I think it's just closed with a piece of tape because we did one that belonged to, not one of these, but somebody's car that we just did. I think it was, I can't remember, but it was a bag like that that was closed with tape and we just resealed it. It might've been one of Glenn's cars. Um, but we're gonna leave that fun for him. And before we go up to the look-see set, guys, one last thing. Um, it's Sunday night now. You guys are probably going to be seeing this Monday afternoon. If you were at the live last night, thank you so much. Uh, to date, that was the funnest, most engaging live we had. We covered a variety of topics. Everything from the size of the uh, Tokyo drift line of the joyride cars, the Fast and Furious, how to tell what's the 118 and what's the smaller ones. Um, even talked about the Edmund Fitzgerald, talked about my first job. We talked about the RLC that's coming out on Tuesday and how it doesn't have mirrors. The ins and outs of pre-ordering. Um, stores I order from from Quebec and stores I will no longer order from and why. So if you haven't checked that out, guys, it was such a good live. What I did is I downloaded the video and converted it and edited it and added photos and stuff like that to show my old job and to show the Edmund Fitzgerald and stuff like that. Check it out because it was a really good one. And it went on for, it's the longest one. I looked at my phone and it was 70 some minutes. Oh, geez, two people had already said goodnight. I looked at my phone and oh my goodness, I could not believe that that much time went by. We had a blast and we're going to be doing it more often. But anyway, let's go up to the look -see set. Thank you all that attended that. If you didn't attend it, check it out, guys, because it was a really good informative one. And even if you did attend it, check out the, because you might want to see the editing magic I did because you get to see the old boat that I worked in the restaurant on. And you get to see all the pictures, all the stuff I was talking about, you get to see pictures of. So anyway, let's go check this guy out. And here we go, guys. One of Stretch's favorite parts of the video, the turntable. You never know, this turntable came from AliExpress. I got a smoking deal on it. I actually did the unboxing video when I got it because it was such a good deal. I was excited about it because it's got three different sizes of top on it, and this is the biggest top. Um, he might end up with one one day. He might want to unbox this stuff one day, and he might end up with one, because they do look pretty cool. But check that beauty out, guys. That paint is something else. One of the things I like about it, guys, is they mixed modern with old, but I wouldn't call it one of those resto mods. They basically put modern tires and wheels on it from what I could see. I don't know what's under the hood because I never watched the movie that it was in. But it could have like, something crazy under the hood. But I just know that I like it because they did not overdo it and kill a classic. They just put new rims and tires on it by the looks of it. Cosmetically, anyway. And they're killer. Look at that. And I like the way the entire car sits. It's just gorgeous. And good news, guys. Night Scalper and the guy she hired will not be interrupting this video because they uh, are chasing two packs all over town. My buddy Doug beat them at the store, beat her at the, at the pegs. Actually, I'm going to splice that video into this one to show you guys, but... My buddy Doug, not the guy that owns this car, but my other buddy sent me a video the other day and well, you'll see, I'll, I'll show you. But it looks like they did what a lot of other people do and used sticker for the dash, but I'm okay with that because they look great. And that sticker, they actually up, one-upped it and did like the reflective, you know, the stuff like they put on fishing lures. You remember that? That's what they did. I like how they uh, made the plastic on the floor look kind of like carpeting, or that might actually be carpeting. Actually, yeah, it is carpeting. Awesome. Got it zoomed right in, guys, to show you everything. Seat belts move a little bit for realism. They are molded rubber. Um, 
Steering wheel doesn't look as big as I thought it did. It's just because of those, like I said, those racing seats. So it's got the modern seats in it. It's got the modern tires and who knows what's under the hood. But they didn't take a classic and make it too modern and screw it up. And you know what I'm talking about. When they take the classic look right away and put too much modern into it. They didn't do that here. So even the way she rolls, guys, she actually rolls like silk. She rolls a lot better than some expensive ones, actually. So they did a good job there. Not like uh, we're supposed to be playing with them, but it's always nice when they roll better than a coal wagon, you know? So the goal in question, if I wanted to collect every car from this line, like stretches, after unboxing this car, am I buying one? Keep in mind, to have every Fast and Furious car, to get this one, you have to get the Green Light Artisan line. Would I buy it? Yes, I would. There's just something about it. Um, like I said, they really hammer, not on the little details, not in the engine bay and all that. They really go for the paint, the look of the car, the wheels, the exterior. They really, really, really try to kill it to make the car look good. And that thing looks great. And if I wanted to collect every Fast and Furious car, I'll admit it, guys. I didn't like it before. I seen Jada versions of the car and I said, come on, they're trying to use a Smokey and the Bandit looking car in the movie, blah, blah, blah. But after seeing this version of it with the rims and stuff like that, it's awesome. And when I say the Jada version of it stretch, I mean the smaller scale Jada version of it. But if they made, if Jada made 118 of that, you want the artisan over the Jada anyway. Trust me. But Jada, strangely, when it comes to making the movie figurines that go with the cars, whoo, they did a nice job. Anyway, guys, what do you say we see what it's, uh, what it's all for? Glamour shots. You know what I say, guys. If these cars, you could pay hundreds, 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 but if they look stupid just the way they sit or if they don't take a picture nice, what good are they? So let's see if this one takes a nice picture. I have a feeling how it's going to come out, but let's see. Retro Maniacs, I have a confession to make. Like our pal Retro, I wasn't big on the Greenlight Artisan line. But after seeing this and that beautiful Kill Bill truck they did, my heart is slowly growing fond of this line. I get that, Joe. I gained respect for the line big time after the Kill Bill truck. Look at that hood, eh? One of the things that they did that I respected is the Ertl, Starsky, and Hutch striped tomato. The Ford is way too high on the front of the car. But on the Artisan, they actually got it right. Um, I preferred the Ertl just because I'm an Ertl guy. Um, but I know somebody that actually went with the green light over the Ertl just because that one mistake on the front of the Ford being too high on the Ertl drove him crazy. And I don't blame him because it is a pretty big boo-boo. If you've got an Ertl, Starsky, and Hutch, have a look at that Ford on the front. All of them got it. And even the non-Starsky ones got it. Um, that uh, Ford Torino Chase I have, I believe that has it. Even non, like I said, non-Starsky cars, they made the mistake on them all. Anyway, guys, green light has gained my respect. Uh, good quality, and they aim for just looking great on the shelf. Uh, they don't worry about rolling up windows. They don't worry about a drive shaft turning because you're not going to see that walking by, right? They worry about what you're going to see when you're walking by that shelf. And they throw everything at it that way. That's how I see Artisan as anyway. And don't forget, guys, we have that orange Roadrunner coming up next. I believe it's a 1970 Plymouth Roadrunner made by GMP, another big heavyweight. Um, it's according to the box, got opening everything on it.
see, this is kind of the opposite of Artisan. Artisan throws their money at the outer, while this one here throws it at the whole car. But a car like this is a lot more expensive than the Artisan. So that's the reason for it. But roll cage, opening doors and trunk, serialized plate. Hopefully he gets a lower number. Rotating drive shaft, leaf springs, fuel filler door, plumb wired engine, wash, soak, rinse, spin. It's got everything. And that'll be the one after that. And maybe after that one, since we'll be done the five days of Fast and Furious, maybe after that we'll do the Joyride Christine. We already seen my Auto World Silver Screen Machines Dirty Christine. In fact, it was the first serious movie car I ever bought because it was brand new and sealed. Um, the ones I had up until then were used, but that's the one I said, I'm going to dive into this hobby, and that's the first one I bought brand new. Um, and then I started seeing the Joyride just sitting on the shelf with the dark windows saying, wow, that th they did a good job just the way that sits there. And I believe they have working headlights too. So we're going to check one of those out. I've always wanted to check it out. I have the dirty version of the car by Auto World. If I like what I see by Joyride, maybe when I get the clean version, it'll be a Joyride. Oh, I'm a gourmet cook. Anyway, guys, 9.45, I got to get up at 2.30 in the morning. That's how much I love you guys. I'm up doing this so you guys have a video tomorrow. Um, I'll get this uploading. Uh, the reason I'm doing it now is so I can get it uploading through the night while I'm at home in Wi-Fi. That way it's up and ready to drop when I leave for work. That way I don't got to upload it at work and chooch all my data. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching. Uh, thanks for all the support with the live on the weekend. Do retro a favor. Smash like for me, please. While you're at it, subscribe and share. As always, guys, happy hunting. Subscribe to the Retro Collectibles YouTube channel for awesome diecast unboxings, reviews, and tips on how to build your dream collection on a budget.